welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of Understanding Honor for Negroes, Part 1. And to you, our dear viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom, Thomas Jefferson. Remember also that the only people mad at you for speaking the truth are those that are living a lie. And have you ever, ever heard an African adage that says it is not the mad person that feels shame but the siblings? Now remember by mad person here we mean a lunatic, somebody who is mentally unstable or mentally sick. They could go naked on the streets and all that. So the question is... It is not that person that is mentally sick that feels shame, but rather the siblings. But in our own case, we are looking at the entire Negro race as in everyone. How will someone whose mother is mentally sick, roaming the streets naked, feel when he or she sees the mom in that condition? How do you feel when you see someone like your own, your sibling, your direct brother? that is being humiliated, being disgraced. How do you feel when in those days when they talked about Africans selling other Africans, how did they feel selling their siblings? Remember we have told you that it is not the same people selling themselves which we are going to continue to show you and proof as well based on recorded history. So let us just move forward and look at a little bit of honor and of course the Negro appellation. And have you also ever heard something like honor killing? Killing of a family member perceived to have brought dishonor to the family. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard something like honor bound? How then did you think the Negroes and other Negroid groups viewed the slave hunters? This should be your question. Remember, we were told that it was the African kings that were selling the slaves. So we need to know how they felt about those that were selling the slaves. You know, they make it look like Negroes were like cattle. You just capture them and sell them and they feel happy with you for selling them. But we have to find out whether those people had honor or not. So, have you noticed that there are Chinese Americans, there are Japanese Americans, there are Indian Americans, and they are not all Asian Americans? And likewise, you notice that there are Somalian Americans, there are Ethiopian Americans, there are Zimbabwean Americans and they are not all African Americans. Likewise, you notice there are English Americans, Scottish Americans, Swedish Americans and they are also not all European Americans. So have you ever wondered how they now came up with African Americans being an identity for the descendants of former slaves and perhaps those who were formerly called Negroes? and before then referred to as Ethiopians. So have you have, uh, ever wondered how they played that trick and why they chose that appellation for that group? So if you have noticed that, did you also notice that the individual groups, that is the different races that make up Africa, including Arabs, Somalis, Ethiopians, Caucasians, Babas, Tuaregs, each individually have their own identities carved out for them while they use the African appellation for the Negroes, perhaps deliberately. Have you noticed that? Now remember you have Arab Americans, so they are treated as Arab Americans. But when you have an African American, they know that this is the group. Whether you mention it or not, whether they say it or not, that is carefully known. So an Arab from Africa comes into America and is classified as an Arab American. But you come from Africa and you are classified as African American, that means you are from nowhere there. You notice that uniquely you are the only one being identified by the continent instead of your ethnic identity. 
Now you might think they don't know where the people came from. But remember, they were formerly known as Negroes. So let us reference from Negro to Black to African American, the power of names and naming, Political Science Quarterly, Volume 106, and it was written by Martin B. and published in 1991. And there we see how they became African Americans. From Negro to Black to African American, the power of names and naming. So bear this in mind so that for those who are challenging and fighting us for saying Negroes, they think Negro is derogatory, but it is not. The reason they feel that way is that the slave master has conditioned them to take on another appellation. Now remember, the Negro has never created his own identity. The slave master ensures he provides him with one so that that way he will handle everything about him, control him, deal with him without him knowing. You might believe us, you might doubt us, but we challenge you to conduct your own research. At least start from the beginning of time to understand the group and what has been happening to them till today. So we see where it tells us that in a December 1988 news conference at Chicago's Hyatt Regency O'Hare Hotel, where leaders of 75 black groups met to discuss a new national black agenda, Jesse Jackson announced that members of the Aries preferred to be called African American. The campaign he then led to replace the term black met immediate success among African American opinion makers and more gradual acceptance in the national press. Jackson's cultural offensive proposed an ethnic reference for a racial one, aiming thereby to help create as much as express a sense of ethnic identity among black Americans. So now at least you know the origin of you being called African American. It's not been long. That's 1988. So that you don't think that's what or who you were before then. So let us move forward. Please notice that from this same journal, it says that it recalled the successful imposition of black over Negro 20 years earlier and renewed other themes of the black power movement of the late 1960s. So they started calling them black in the 60s. So you see how they keep changing the appellation. Now remember before they were called Negroes, they used to be known as Ethiopians or Sudanese or whatever. But our interest is for you to see, for those complaining about being called Negro, to see how the slave master is still in control of their lives and their thinking till today without them knowing. And unfortunately, even the educated ones, even the professors amongst them still do the same thing. Now sit back and ask yourself, when they had Martin Luther King Jr., they had Malcolm X. One was Muslim, one was Christian. Now, when, when they have Jesse Jackson, they say he is a Christian. They have Louis Farrakhan, who is a Muslim. So you see that each of those two sides, they bring in people. Those leaders are not your leaders. Those are handpicked by the slave masters. You may not understand it. We challenge you to investigate whatever thing we have said. Because before we say it, we saw it written somewhere. But however, if you go further down, you see what it says. Names can be more than that. They can convey powerful imagery. So naming, proposing, imposing, accepting names can be a political exercise. And the call for blacks to be called African Americans was for more than a manner of speaking. To be called African Americans has cultural integrity, Jackson said. It puts us in our proper historical context. Every ethnic group in this country has a reference to some land base, some historical cultural base. African Americans have hit the level of cultural maturity. There are Armenian Americans, and Jewish Americans, and Arab Americans, and Italian Americans, and with a degree of accepted and reasonable pride, they connect their heritage to their mother country and where they are now. Now we ask you, the viewer, to ask Reverend Jesse Jackson how African American can be the same as Italian American when the Italian is a part of Europe. So they didn't answer European American, they answered Italian American. But here he is also mentioning Arab Americans. When there are Arabs in Africa, the Tunisians, the Moroccans, the Egyptians are all Arabs. 
So they didn't answer African Americans, they answered Arab Americans. But here he is saying his own is African American. This should tell you that somebody sold that dummy to him. In subsequent editions, we shall look at some of these dummies and how they sell them. Now remember the case of integration between Malcolm X and uh, Martin Luther King Jr. When they came with integration, Malcolm saw it as treachery. He didn't buy into it. But Martin Luther King Jr. thought it was something good for his people and bought into it. So you see them decorating, pla uh, what do you call it, statues of him and all that. Where they came with their treachery, he bought into it. So they celebrate him. So you have to bear all this in mind. Don't just look at what they tell you. Look at what they are not telling you. Those people are not your leaders because you voted or appointed them. They are your leaders because the slave master started telling you that these are people we recognize as your leaders. Go to them. Then from behind, they go to them and tell them what they want, convince them and use them to sell that dummy to you. They do it all the time. We saw what they used Obama to sell to the Negro community. We saw what they used people like Ajay Crowder or Samuel Crowder to sell to the Negro communities in South Saharan Africa or what was Negro land and Guinea. So you need to understand the game of the slave master before you can checkmate him. So please pause this video and read the entire page yourself or look for the materials referenced and study it entirely and see what you can get out of it. The reason they are able to get away with every trick they play is because the Negroes refuse to read. They instead dwell on what they are told. So if you notice, they come with their lie, concoct it from whatever and wherever and then sell it to the Negroes. And these are very easy because the Negroes don't read. They don't look back in time to see what may be going on. You see the case of a so-called slave voyages ship. And they now put the names that they claim ended in Yah, which is a very big lie, which is very, very easy to see as well. When you look at the facts that they didn't have a manifest, the languages were different, there was no way they could have obtained the names of the people in a language that was totally different from the ones spoken by the Negroes at that time. The reason they are selling that dummy now is so that the so-called Hebrew Israelites and those that believe the lie of a supreme being making some people slaves to suffer for 400 years will buy into that narrative. That's what they are doing. We shall ultimately show you how they did it during the slave trade, before the slave trade and after the slave trade or how they played it in such a way that they made it appear to the Negroes that it is the Most High that has ordained whatever is happening to you. It is because you disobeyed him as if they are the only ones that are disobeying the Most High. Think about it. Let us reference Congressional Record, Proceedings and Debates of the 51st Congress, First Session, also Special Session of the Senate, Volume 21, Washington Government Printing Office. And it was published in 1889 and there we see the following to sum up the negro character it is deficient in the passions and in their corresponding virtues and the life of the negro in his primitive condition apparently so peaceful and innocent is not that of an unsophisticated state of existence but is due to what may be described as an organically rudimentary form of mind and consequently capable of but little development to a higher type. Mere, peaceable, vegetarian, prolific human rabbits and guinea pigs. In fact, they may be trained and taught to read and write, sing psalms and other tricks, but Negroes they must remain to the end of the chapter. The Negro has no idea of a creator or of a future existence Neither does he adore the sun, nor any other object, idol or image. His whole belief is in evil spirits and in charms or fetishes. These fetishes can be employed for evil as well as to counteract the bad effect of other malign fetishes or spirits. Even the natives of Portuguese Angola who have received the idea of God or creator from the white men will not allow that the same power rules over both races but that the God of the white man is another and different from the God of the black man. As one old negro that I was once arguing with expressed it, your God taught you to make gunpowder and guns but ours never did 
and it is perfectly established in their minds that in consequence of our belonging to another and more powerful God, their fetishes and unavailing either for God, good or evil, to the white man. Our ridiculing their belief in fetish only serves to make them believe the more in it. So you see what we are talking about. Their gods taught them to make guns. The Negroes do not believe their God taught them to make guns too. Because the Negroes had steel, they had metal and iron works. But they did not make guns because they don't kill or murder people. These are two different things which we shall ultimately show you. Now, the reason they are now telling the Negroes that you are African Americans is to make them the same with those that captured and sold them. And still use those that captured and sold them against them, which we shall show you in this video as we go along. Let us also reference the earth and its inhabitants, Africa, by Alice Reckless, edited by A. H. King, Volume 2, Northwest Africa, and it was published in 1893 or thereabout, and there we see the following. The Negroes Next to that of the Barbers and Arabs, the largest section of the population is certainly the Negro element amongst those who call themselves Arabs or even Shofa, there are thousands who betray their black descent in the color of their skin and hair, the form of their features alone attesting mixture with the white Semites. Commercial relations are so frequent and regular between Tripoli and the interior of the continent that there is nothing surprising in the presence of numerous Negritians on the Mediterranean coastlands. Now, Negritians refers to Nigerians today. Negritia is a synonym for Nigeria, and it's also called Negroland, and it's different from Guinea. We will ultimately show you how they redefined the slave trade, rejected their system, and still continued with it. And going further, it says, the great majority, however, of those now living in Tripolitana have been forcibly brought thither as slaves. Formerly, not a single caravan arrived from Sudan unaccompanied by a gang of captives. Now, remember, Sudan is where you call northern Nigeria today. It's bigger than that, but just to give you an idea. So, those were the slave hunters. Like we said, do they have honor? We are going to show you how they are still being used to tomorrow morning by the slave masters. Unfortunately, anyways, the slave master takes the best of the land, gives them guns, and all they do for the slave master is to mother people and still turn around because they lack honor to tell you that they are brothers. We are going to show you uh, in this series how they are doing that till today. So it goes further to say, we must therefore reckon by hundreds of thousands the number of blacks who have been imported into Tripoli either to remain in the country or to be forwarded thanks to Egypt or Turkey although at present no longer carried on openly in the capital of the Viet, the slave trade has not yet by any means totally ceased. Now remember they tell you today that Islam forbids slavery and slave trade, which you can see is a lie. It was actually the Muslims that did the capturing. So when they became Muslims, they felt that it was their duty. Because remember, all these things are classical conditioning. They conditioned the Negroes along the laws of Islam, which at that time told them that it was legal and legitimate. In fact, it was their moral duty to capture the so-called pagans. That's the Negroes at that time. So you bear this in mind how their games work. The same thing they do today. You see how they structured those countries you call um, countries in sub-Saharan Africa and own them as properties and position their slave raiding partners as heads there. So if you go there and threaten the interest of the slave master, the same people that claim to be your brothers will murder you with weapons provided by the slave master because they lack common sense. They don't have honor. Those armies you see were the slave hunting terror groups which we have challenged you to investigate, to research, come up with whatever thing you like and tell us it's not true. Because the moment you conduct the research, it will take you less than two hours of research time to discover that those were they are the slave hunting terror groups. They just renamed them, gave them uniforms and they still continue to do what they have been doing for the slave masters from then till today. So going further, it says... 
that on hearing of the arrival of a caravan in the southern oasis, the dealers in human flesh, note he called it the dealers in human flesh, instruct their agents to obtain the best firms for their living merchandise, which never fails to find a purchaser. At the same time, both Negroes and Negresses, that's male and female Negroes, at least in the capital, may at any time demand a letter of emancipation and this document is never refused. Many of these freed remained in the houses of their former masters who are still looked up to as patrons and protectors even by those who withdraw from their roof to live on their own or rather independently. On all festive occasions, they return to share in the family rejoicings. The great majority of the Negro population resides neither in the capital nor in any of the other towns of the province. Faithful to their racial instincts, they have grouped themselves in small hamlets where they live in huts made of palms, branches and reeds. Neither the houses of the civilized stocks nor the tents of the nomad Arabs suit the habits of communities still following the same mode of life as their fellow countrymen on the banks of the Niger and Lake Chad. Although familiar with Arabic, most of them still speak their native dialects. From the Nyanyam territory to that of the Fulas, all the regions of Central Africa are represented in Tripolitana by their respective languages. Although the majority or about two-thirds of the population converse in the house are already current throughout Western Sudan. In many districts, a stranger might fancy it but also become the prevailing language of Tripolitana owing to the incessant chattering of the Negroes as contrasted with the less voluble Arabs and Babas. But it is not likely that the Hausa tongue will maintain itself for many generations in the country for however correct the social life of the local black communities, however touching their devotion to their families, the Negro women are rarely very prolific while infant mortality is very high, yet in other respects, the women would appear to resist the climate better than the men, and many even live to a great age. Now, our interest in reading this to you is to show you how they were also enslaved outside the U.S. You know, today they just talk about the U.S. as if that's where the slave trade started and ended. It's all over the world, including Europe and the Middle East. Now, the reason some people, especially some Negroes, go to mosques or churches or synagogues is because they have no idea what those religions are. Those religions are weapons of slavery. They are never true to the Most High. If you doubt what we are telling you, put it in the comment section that you doubt it and we prove it to you if you can read yourself. Now, the Negroes believed in the Almighty Creator of Heaven and Earth and that is why they were targeted. Remember, the book the slave master brought always looked for a way to make a slave of a chosen group. So for those who claim, oh, we are the true Israelites, we are chosen and all that, you have to look at what they are not telling you. If you notice, the biblical Joseph was a chosen child of the parents. The brothers gang together and sold him into slavery. That's the same game they are playing. Now, psychologically, what that does to the Negro is to make him believe that the Most High ordained him for slavery, which is what those religions are doing while the Islamic one is making them militant enough to be capturing and selling their siblings, the Christian one makes them believe it is their lot to be slaves. But let us just move forward. Now remember we asked you again if those slave hunters had honor. If people, let's say the Nigerian army for example, the Cameroonian army for example had honor, will they be killing their brothers in defense of the slave master's interest? Certainly you know they were not. But that's because they are mostly institutions of the Negroid group. They lack common sense, according to the slave masters. So they don't have the brains to ask themselves basic questions. Why should I be killing my brother for another person? Even if he's not your brother, for humanity's sake. That's the game they are playing. But let us just move forward. Let us not forget that numerous sources have shown that the Negroes worshipped the true creator of heaven and earth prior to the coming of the Europeans, so that for those who do not understand the motive and the reason they brought their book to understand it, it doesn't mean that the book came from the Most High. 
it means they just went copied the negro way of life put it in a book and brought it as if it's original to them which we shall ultimately show you but let us quickly look at the modern path of an universal history from the earliest accounts to the present time compiled from original authors and it was published in 1784 and there we see the following the negroes believe in the true god the creator of the world that's our interest so that you understand why they were capturing them now remember some of the people that claim to be hebrew israelites or what not and believe so much in the book the slave master concocted from wherever believe that they were made to be slaves is because they believe whatever the slave master tells them and those are the challenges the negroes are facing today now you notice that some of them are claiming to be African, not Negroes, because they don't understand. Now notice that it says the Negroes believe. That means the non-Negroes do not believe or share the same belief as the Negroes. So, but today if you come and classify all of them as all African, then it effectively wipes away the Negro identity, wipes away the fact that he was worshipping the true creator of heaven and earth prior to the coming of these uh, marauders. So you need to understand the game they are playing and all you need to do is to look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. Before you fight us, before you call us names, all you can do is find the materials referenced, study them yourself and then come here with an informed opinion. Come here with the facts well backed up with you. Not coming here with what your pastor told you in church to collect your money or your imam that is making you go and build the economy of Saudi Arabia before your own brothers your own brothers are suffering but you have money to fly to saudi arabia to go and worship there when your own people are suffering you don't understand what they do with those religions but when you study these basic history you will understand them so in order to also satisfy the curiosities of those that think that african is a better name than being referred to as negroes let us quickly reference history of the liverpool privateers and letters of Marquis with an account of the liverpool slave trade by gamma williams with illustrations and it was published in 1897 and there we see the following after passing through various scenes of danger and difficulty he reached home in november 1751 after a voyage of 14 months in july 1752 he sailed again from Liverpool, commander of the new slave ship, African, so that you don't think when they call you African, they have done you some great favor. Remember, African could have been the name of the slave ship here. Remember, the place had a name before they called it African. It is incumbent on you to try and find out what the names of those places were before the slave masters remain, renamed them. So that you don't start thinking, oh, we're African, we're African. We had shown you that the Arabs are Arab Americans, even if they are from Africa. We had shown you that the Somalis are Somali Af Americans. We had shown you that even Zimbabweans, those places that the slave trade didn't get to, they carefully took an identity for themselves. So why you are jumping up thinking that, oh, we are all Africans, they know you are not. But they're not going to tell you. They might try to embrace you as little as they can. But now remember... The groups they were not considered intelligent and peaceful enough to be slaves. And those are the challenges the Negroes face. So let us read further down. It tells us a little about the captain of the slave ship African. So it goes further to say, He is no sooner at sea than down in his diary goes the expression of his earnest desire to live holy to the Lord. He elaborates a scheme of rules for his own conduct prays for his wife whom he almost worshipped, arranges for as much Shabbat rest as was possible for his crew and even sets apart a day of fasting and prayer on their behalf. This is somebody going to capture the Negroes for sale but he is uh, observing all these things to show you how hypocritical he can be. Then going further it says these were the high and holy purposes of a good man made in simple and childlike faith in God and we must not let our present enlightened prejudice against the slave trade lead us to imagine that John Newton was a hypocrite or a fanatic. He was simply for thoroughness in all they did, whether on the side of black or white angels. Formerly energetic as an atheist, 
he was now energetic for Christ, let us return to his own narrative. But our interest is the fact that there was a slave ship called Jesus. He was captained by this man called John Newton and it was in July 1752 that he sailed from Liverpool. So if you are being called African American, whether you believe it or not, African was the name of a slave ship as well. So before you quarrel about being tagged Negro, there is nothing offensive about the Negro. We had shown you where Jesse Jackson and some group gathered to say they now want to be called African, which is entirely up to them. We don't have any ideas where they got that from and how people could be addressed by the continent, not the country, not their ethnic identity because the slave master knows down to a T where and where they captured the slaves from. We guarantee you that. And from the same book, we will see the receipt of sale. It says, copy of account sales of Negroes, sales of 268 slaves imported in the ship African, Captain Thomas Trader from Malimba, on the account and risk of Messrs. John Cole and Co., owners of the said ship, merchants in Liverpool. Now, remember, it was done like oil today. Now you see some people who will sit in their houses because they have access to a computer. They will tell you where are the slave ships with which they captured the Negroes because they have been either brainwashed or made to believe that the slave trade didn't happen. They forget that if you want to see the slave ships, you either have to go to the bottom of the oceans where they destroyed them or look for those that capsized that they couldn't retrieve. That's the only way you can sit in your home looking at your computer and be asking somebody to show you the slave ships. So who do you want to go and conduct that research for you? If you have all the money, go and buy some robots. Go and buy some ship and go on the high sea. Follow those routes and send your robots to the down to the bottom of the ocean. You're going to see some ships there. That's a guarantee. So, but our interest is for you to see that when you see some of them jumping around because they were said to be Negroes, it's out of ignorance. They don't know what they are saying. It's just like those that watched Dan Calloway and his uh, view that the people were indigenous to Americas. Because the slave master is looking for a way to wash off his hands from the terrors and atrocities of that past. Now that they have in the fools, the Negroid groups and other Hamitic groups in Sub-Saharan Africa whom they use to enslave and subjugate the Negroes. They are doing their best. And it is those less intelligent group that now claim to have been behind it they feel very good they will tell you how they stole the slaves because they lack common sense they lack honor it is called honor if you notice you can check the record you will see that rarely will you see american soldiers murdering americans but go to nigeria go to cameroon you will see where the soldiers are murdering the same people in the same country and telling you nonsense because they lack honor. This was the same slave raiding terror groups. They are still doing what they were doing. They don't have that wisdom, that intelligence to control themselves, to understand what they are supposed to be doing. And from the opposite page of where you have the accounts of the Negro sales from the slave ship African, you see where it tells us about the shipping, the shipping level. It says, as few persons in this country ever saw a deal of lading for human beings shipped on board a British vessel engaged in this odious traffic, we append a copy of an original bill of lading for slaves shipped for Georgia. So you, when you are saying, oh, you're calling God, 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 you need to go find out what you're calling. You're certainly not calling the creator of heaven and earth because God is generic in the first place. Allah is an Arab deity in the second place. So you need to understand what games they are playing. So you see where it says, shipped by the grace of God, in good order, and well conditioned by James, son of eligible, in and upon the good ship called the Mary Barrow, whereof is master under God, for this present voyage, Captain David Martin, and now riding at the anchor at the bar of Senegal, and by God's grace bound for Georgia in South Carolina to say, 24 prime slaves, 6 prime women slaves, being marked and numbered as in the margin and to be delivered, whatever. But our interest is for you to see what the billion flooding was like. So when they are telling you today it didn't happen, it this, it did, it's because they want to deceive you. They believe the Negroes are gullible to a fault. So let us just move forward. Let us also reference Abiyokuta and the Cameroon's mountains 
An Exploration by Richard F. Barton in two volumes, Volume 1, and it was published in 1863. And there we see the following. So we see where it says, From Lagos to Abeokuta, after a flying survey of the Oyu rivers in the Amin Delta of the lovely Niger, I found myself stranded at Fanandapo Island, Bight of Biafra, Gulf of Guinea, Western Intra Tropical Africa, and divided by the thinnest of party walls from Anti Paradise. Nothing to do and no prospect of doing anything, which pleasant state of things endured. From Wednesday the 2nd to Wednesday the 9th of October 1861, a long, long, a very long week. Our interest in this is for you to start looking at places like Ambazonia and Biafra. Look at the body language of the slave masters. Remember, the Negroid groups, they lack common sense. They lack honor. They lack the most basic of humanity. So now, if you look at those agitations in Biafra and Ambazonia, it will give you an idea of where they got the slaves from. You will sit back and ask yourself, why is the slave master keeping quiet? Why does he not mention those things? He would rather tell you that Christians are being killed. He will never tell you. He won't take any action. No. He won't do anything. When we look at honor in detail, because we were looking at the Negro appellation here, when we look at honor in subsequent part of this series, we will show you exactly what games they are playing. But we want you to find time to look at the Biafra agitation, look at the Ambazonia agitations to understand what games they are playing. Now, remember that the Southern Cameroons used to be part of this same Nigeria that they are talking about. So you need to understand what games they are playing. That's where they got the slaves from. Those were parts of the slave coast. We are showing you how the Negroes got there in the first place. It's incumbent on you to conduct additional research on whatever we have done. Just conduct your own research to understand what may be going on. They can't continue to insult our intelligence forever. Every lie has an expiry date. Now here is something of interest. It says that they are placed for discipline under some old and trusty hand who compels them by force of stripes to industry. They amused themselves by remarking on the sly, Oibo Akitiaba, the white man is an old ape. The African will say of the European, he looks like folks. And the answer will often be no, he don't. Thus we observe that whilst the Caucasian doubts the humanity of the Hamite, the letter repays the compliment in kind. Now remember the Caucasian is the whites. They doubt the humanity of the Hamites. It's the same Hamites and Negroid groups. The Negroid groups, they are dark but they are not the same as the Negroes that they used to capture the slaves. So you see that they leverage on their lack of humanity. They are very heartless. They can murder people. If you look at, just look at the army in Cameroon and in Nigeria. You see an army of a country but its own job is to kill people from within that country because they think nobody knows. They don't ever fight external aggressors. They only kill their own people because they are controlled by the slave masters. It is the group that are called these Hamites. Yes, it may be true there are some Negroes in the army, no doubt, because of economic stagnation. Remember, those same group are used to make sure that the place does not make any progress. So it tells us that this race, the Ibado or Lower Eba, is distinctly Negroid without showing the characteristics of the full-blooded Negro. Now remember, when a, there is a mixture or a cross, it's no longer a pure Negro because they believe that the Negroes are very intelligent and very peaceful. So, but when the mixture comes in, they may become more violent than naturally they are. So, those are the things you have to note. You can pause this video and read the entire page yourself. We'll show you one little thing before we round up. So, here it says, On the Ogun River, we had ample opportunities of forming judgment concerning the naked Negro painting on the line. I have traveled amongst wild tribes from the North American Indians to the Bills of Hindustan, but I never saw such an utter absence of what we conventionally term modesty as amongst these Ewas. The Ewas are Negroes. Anyways, the women will stand up and bath publicly in the river without a vestige of dress or shame, and the Negalins are as much glad as the Promutinans and the sons of the Coral Islands. Can this be innocence? As some think, 
or is it the mere absence of all ideas of propriety? I confess myself unable to decide. Now remember, those days the streams were the source of water and people bathed in them. There are usually designated male and female areas. Perhaps these white folks just got there. But you see, he had mentioned it as the woman was bathing in the water naked. But if you read it without reading between the lines, you will think they just come out and start bathing naked. And that is how the idea of people saying the Negroes were naked when they came. Those are some of the ways they got it. It was never that they were na naked. We have shown from 1714 documentation from the same people that the Negroes made beautiful clothes. Mongo Park himself recorded that they made a type of blue cloth whose quality he has never seen even in Europe. So you can understand what we are talking about. But let us just round up. And for those who were looking for the slave ships or the slavers, whatever they call them, here it says he embarked on the 14th November 1842 on board a condemned slaver which three Negroes had purchased and freighted for Badagri. So our interest is for you to know where you will go and look for the slave ships, not standing or sitting and typing on your computer, show us the ships, because somebody came on this channel to make the comment that we should show them the ship. Now we showed him some of the documents that showed where they destroyed some of the slave ships and he has um, gone and perhaps never to come back to now ask us the same question again. Perhaps he's going to look for a different question to ask. But let us just round up here by showing you something that should trigger your interest in Biafra and Ambazonia. So now we have no idea of how they got the name Ambazonia. But what we know is that it must have some historical footprint. But our interest is for you as an individual with some milk of human kindness flowing in your veins to look at the difference in how the UN handles conflicts in those places as against how it handles it when they happen in Europe and elsewhere. Now remember these were the same people that captured and sold the slaves. So you don't expect any fairness or fair treatment of them to the Negroes. So the reason we are telling you this is if you looked at the Ambazonia and Biafra agitations, those are part of the slave trade. The people that are in charge and in control of what you call the country were the slave hunters. The army was the slave raiding terror groups in both countries, in both Cameroon and Nigeria. That's who they are. So now when you sit up to say we want freedom, the slave master will tap on the fools they have there. Remember, we are talking about honor, which in subsequent editions we shall show you and show you how the slave trade is still sustained in this, those areas till tomorrow morning. So when they tap them, they start murdering innocent people. So it's incumbent on you to start looking at those areas to be able to not buy into the narrative of the slave master because they work with those idiots they have there. So because they work together, their stories will be the same. You will hear somebody telling you that somebody violates a constitution. Meanwhile, the constitution was written by the slave master, passed on to the less intelligent Negroid groups and used to subjugate others. You can imagine a constitution that does, wasn't written by the people imposed on them and somebody is citing it as an excuse for murdering innocent people. That should begin to tell you. Now listen to the slave masters as well. Listen to the likes of Trump and Theresa May and see when you will hear them mention Biafra or Ambazonia. No matter how many people, they are foot soldiers. The Nigerian army or the Cameroonian army is killed. They will keep quiet. Now, if you expect to hear condemnation from the Negroid group, it's a lie. They will defend them. That's why they lack basic common sense and humanity in them. You can see where the slave master recorded such things as well. So you need to bear this in mind. So when you hear them saying, these are the laws they break, these are the laws they didn't break. If you look at those people, you will know that they lack humanity. That's exactly the same way the slave trade happened. Those other groups were defending the slave trade as an institution. They defended it as a legitimate duty based on their religion. So you don't think that there is something there that is happening there that is not being controlled by the slave masters. Bear this in mind. So we see where it tells us that a description of the Ambozes, which is probably where they got Ambazonia from, or Cameroon's country by M.J. Gazlia, who in 1699 made a voyage to Old Calabar extracted from Babot. 
So please remember that Old Calabar is where they call Bakasi. It's in the same area. The Bakasi, they see there to Cameroon and all that. They just look for a way to create conflict and they use the less intelligent Negroid group to massacre the Negroes. That's why we've always challenged you to look for where they got the slaves from. The concept of African doesn't cut it because you know that we are showing you Somalian American, we are showing you Ethiopian American, we are showing you Zimbabwe Americans. So if you are answering African Americans, you are just wasting your time. It's too broad for you because no slaves came from Zimbabwe, none come from South Africa, none came from the likes of um, Somalia, Ethiopia, uh, Tunisia, Egypt and all those places. So when you are looking at it from being African American, you are missing the cut. So we see from within the highlighted portion, after the fuller occupation of Ilorin, the empire fell to pieces. But our interest is further down where it says, Djebu in the south and Ewa in the west, grouped round about Yoruba proper. Because the Djebus and Ewas are not the same as Yorubas. This is the same issue we're having with the guy from Ashanti and the coast tribes. Now remember the reason the Negroes are very close to the water is that they have been escaping from centuries down. That's how they got there. If you were to read these materials, you will see what we are talking about. But then, unfortunately, the Negroid group, when they come here, all they try to see and make you believe is what the slave master has told them. Any other thing that, they, that may be even be favorable to them, but not what they believe. They will start fighting you and calling you names. That's one thing you will notice anyways. But we challenge you to go and conduct your own research. Then further down, you see some points of interest on the opposite page though. It shows you that it was the Mohammedan raiders advancing from the north. So that's how the Negroes moved down. The only thing that stopped them is the waters. When we look at honor proper, you will see exactly what we are talking about. But then further down, you see what it tells us about the slave coast. So we see where it says, lastly, the famous city of Abiokuta, 200,000, capital of the Bar State, on the Ogun River, due north of Lagos, 75,000. The natural outlet of all these teeming populations and capital of the British possessions on the slave coast. Note that very well. On the slave coast. Now remember, Lagos used to be part of the Gold Coast, so it was part of Ghana. So if not for the way they ceded it to what they call Nigeria today, and what was formerly Negro land and all that, it would have also been Ghana today. We, we are talking of Lagos, so that you understand what we are saying. So now it goes further down to say, Abiokuta, which is a typical Yoruba city, dates from 1825 and owes its origin to the incessant slave hunting expeditions, especially from Dahomey, compelling the scattered rural communities to take refuge against the common enemy in this rocky stronghold well named Abiokuta, the Undercliff. Here was constituted a free confederacy of as many as 60 distinct tribal groups each retaining the usage, religion, administration, and the very names of their original communes. Thanks to its spirit of solidarity, this apparently incoherent aggregate of tribal groups has always successfully resisted the attacks of invading armies from Ibado, Dahomey, and other quarters. The period of intertribal and foreign wars has now been permanently closed by the pacification of Yoruba land under British auspices. So you see what we're telling you. The Euro, if, if you notice, it tells you about those that were conducting the slave raids, but it never mentions who they were. It just says the homie. So who in the homie was conducting the slave raids? Now he mentioned 60 tribal groups. So today you only see Yorubas. You will probably not remember that the Yorubas were capturing their bars and all these other small groups until the British stepped in. So likewise, the Fulas. So now you notice that those are the same people they use till tomorrow morning. So you see, while they claim they are protecting something like one Nigeria, the oil is being stolen by the slave master. So the best of the land is going to the slave master, while it is only their duty to use the guns and weapons provided by the slave masters to murder their so-called siblings because they lack the most basic of humanity. They lack common sense. They lack honor. Finally, let us reference the Anthropological Review, Volume 5 of 1867, and there we see the following. So it tells us that the blacks of Sudan, the Galas, the Kafas, Babas, and Nomadians of Africa, and the Kans 
Bills and Santals of India belong to the first subdivision and the Congo and Igbo Negroes to the second. The native of Sudan and Senegambia differ very greatly in moral character from the Negroes of Congo and Igbo. They have considerable vigor of character, pertinacity, independence and intelligence, are well are calculated for successful traders and have not that yielding character which so fits the true Negro for a servant. Note that very well and have not that yielding character which so fits the true negro for a servant so they know who the negroes are they know who they are targeting they know who they want so if they were to start the slave trade again today in the same format it was be between 1434 and 1900 they still know who to target so now this is the reason you see the negroid groups the hermetic groups those that lack humanity that's why they keep claiming that they were also sold but they can never tell you who it was that captured and sold them or could have captured and sold them. That's the only reason because the slave master has already classically conditioned them to start doing that line because they are controlled by the slave masters. The slave master understands that these guys lack common sense. So they now leverage on their inability to reason, inability to think as humans to now use them. So this is why you keep hearing them shouting that, oh no, we were also sold. The moment you ask them by who, they start looking for who. Then when they can't find, they will tell you, oh, the Europeans. But they have been saying they, they were also sold. Then they jump, oh, Africans were enslaving Africans before the Europeans came and all that. That's who they are. The slave master uses them to propagate his lies. They understand that a lie told often enough begins to look like the truth. And here we come to the end of this edition of Understanding Honor for Negroes. We challenge you to look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. We thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research. Peace.